Okay, for my first case, my first appearance on the Mystery Files, I have chosen the disappearance of Philip Taylor Kramer. Ooh, I okay. know that is okay. I'm excited. Okay, I'll do a little backstory. Okay. Philip Taylor Kramer was a man of many talents. Hmm. He was, by all accounts, a genius who had a degree in aerospace engineering. Huh. He worked for a governmentally contracted firm working on missiles before starting his own firm called Total Multimedia in eight, 1989 with Randy Jackson, Stop brother it. of oh Michael gosh. Jackson. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Whoa. wait, that's, what? Okay. It, that's so confusing to me because they had, I have seen nothing about his involvement in this. But <laughs> that's, that's chaotic. Yeah. And before that, the reason I heard of him was because he played bass in a like a later period version of this band called Iron Butterfly that had <laughs> one a great hit. name. Yeah, in like 1969 called Inagata De Vida. Oh we gosh. have that album, by the way. We can listen to it after, I think. He was in that band from 74 <laughs> to 80, but that's not important. After he left that band, he went and got his degree in aerospace engineering. Mm. Okay. okay. Wow, a musician and getting a degree. Wow. Yes. Wow. He said big brains and music. He's just like you. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You got the brains. You can okay. go to space. <laughs> space. All right. So, on the morning of Sunday, February 12th, 1995, Taylor Kramer had to be on the road at 9 to head for LAX to pick up a business associate, Greg Martini, and his wife. He was supposed to return to Thousand Oaks, where he lived, with the Martinis to pick up his wife, Jennifer, and the, then the four, four of them would go to a relaxing dinner. The day before he disappeared, uh, Taylor Kramer thought he would take his kids for a bite, finding only 40 cents in his pocket. That's oh, important. That's he nice. turned to his dad, Ray Kramer, also important, and asked mm -hmm. for a few dollars. Ray did what he would never do and said no. It wasn't the money, of course. It was Taylor. He was exhausted, burned out, just shot. I laughed and told him to go home and get some sleep. That night, he slept only fitfully, getting up a few times at least once to run complex mathematical equations on his laptop computer. It wasn't unusual for him to do this, says his wife, but in the weeks leading up to this particular night, it had been the norm, like three or four weeks of just on, nonstop, just total sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. um, so that the next morning... He left his house at 9 and stopped at a medical center to briefly visit with his wife Jennifer's father, a cancer patient. Then he rep repeatedly checked in by cell phone from his van to report that the plans for the day would just be changing. Mm -hmm. In those calls, his voice took a completely different form. Without the characteristic upbeat lilt, yet energized to the point of sounding out of breath, in one call, Kramer asked Jennifer to tell Martini if Martini were to phone her, to take a cab from the airport to Westlake Hyatt Hotel. Kramer said he would meet everyone there in an hour later than planned at about 2 p.m. With the biggest surprise for you, Jennifer Oh, Rawls. Interesting. Oh. I'm scared. <laughs> Kramer also dialed Ron Bushy, the original Iron, Butter Iron Butterfly drummer and Kramer's close friend, and said, Bush, I love you more than life itself. And in another call to his wife, he would say, whatever happens, I'll always be with you. Oh, that's so concerning. <laughs> that, is so, that is so, like... It's so ominous. Premeditated, it feels <laughs> yeah. like. He's like, hey, I'm gonna skirt by. <laughs> Bye, I love you. Then came the dreaded call at 11.59 a.m. from somewhere in the San Fernando Valley on the Ventura Freeway to the 911 operator. This is Philip Taylor Kramer, and I'm going to kill myself. <gasps> oh, my Stop. God. Yeah. Oh, if no. he did... He left no trace. Neither the man nor his vehicle had been found, what? and all articles relating to him, such as credit, ATM cards, and cell phones, have all gone unused. Oh, that's weird. The Whoa. first reports of Kramer's disappearance said he ma never made it to the airport and that he pulled a U-turn in L.A. or in the San Fernando Valley and was driving around making calls. Backing up that notion was the fact that Martini couldn't find Kramer at the airport. Mm -hmm. However, Taylor Kramer's absent-mindedness over money left some tracks. Ten days into the investigation of, its, of his disappearance, a form letter arrived at the Kramer's home seeking $3 for parking fees at LAX. It turns oh, out Kramer was unable to pay his tab because he only had 40 cents in his pocket. Oh, <laughs> okay. yeah. 
and couldn't leave the Delta lot without signing an IOU. Kramer was at the airport for 45 minutes that day of his disappearance, parking records show. Mm. No one saw him, and no videotapes captured his appearance. That is where wild. Was he? Where'd he go? So he just, like, uh, up and disappeared. Like, he said, I, I'm going to commit suicide, and then yeah. just did not? He just disappeared. Like, it was a cover. What? Like, he was trying to make a cover-up out of it. That's what it sounds like. Ooh, <laughs> or maybe that is so someone, intriguing. like, stole his identity and, like, tried to sound like him. Like, someone really sounded like him. I don't mm-hmm. know. Or, like, held him at gunpoint or something okay. to make him say oh something. Oh, my gosh. This gets crazier. Oh, oh no. Boy. Oh, no. Something happened during that time, either in his head or at the terminal, that made him turn away, said Chuck Carter, a former L.A. cop and drug enforcement agent who was working with the Kramers as a private investigator. Um, he says, I'll tell you, I haven't had a clue. The guy didn't have an enemy. The guy was a dedicated family man. I checked him out. Whatever happened in his head while at the airport or whatever happened right in the airport, I've got a feeling we'd have to learn from Kramer himself. That guy also feels that the disappearance itself is a bit of a conundrum because Kramer was a six foot five man, Mm. like blonde hair, bright blue eyes. If you've got a vehicle Mm. out there and you're just walking around, nobody's going to not see you. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to make some impressions on people. Someone's going to remember you. Yeah, you're going to be seen. People did. Yeah, Mm. they should. He was spotted at sites in Canoga Park where Kramer lived in the 70s while he was playing with Iron Butterfly. A pawn shop manager recalled a man fitting Kramer's description who had no interest in selling his wedding ring, but instead talking computers. Mm. Then at Santa Monica Pier, then at a soup kitchen in Long Beach, okay. probably because he didn't have any money, mm. at a, and then at a Ralph's supermarket in Agora Hills, an elderly couple was approached by a very tall man fitting Kramer's description. He said, I'm in trouble and need to call my family and only have 40 cents. Oh, <laughs> well, then there you go. Yeah. And he said, can you help me? They did not help him because they thought he was a Crazy. beggar or a bum or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And But the woman said apparently uh what chastised her husband later because she thought that he was genuine and sweet and was literally looking for some help which he was which he was um his wife jennifer later received a call from a man whose voice she is convinced is kramer's but is deeply Uh. stressed and as she puts it the person of a voice who is completely out of it the Mm. caller just said hello 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 and that was it that's so scary. Yeah. Imagine if she's like waiting to hear from her husband and that's all she gets. Like I'd be panicked. Just like a hello, hello. Or if you've been waiting for days and yeah. that's all you get. That's <laughs> like it's very Stranger Things when uh, Will goes missing. Yes. Like yeah. Will. Will is Will? that you? Like it's the same sort of. Like but, you're holding on to that hope for as long as possible. Yeah. yeah. But also the fact people saw him and he was so distressed and she got that call. It's yeah. like what is going on? Okay. Oh my gosh. His father remained unconvinced his death was a suicide. Taylor mm-hmm. had told me a long time before that there were people giving him problems oh. they wanted what he was doing and several of them had threatened him he told me if i ever mm. say i'm gonna kill myself don't you believe it i'm gonna <gasps> be needing help <laughs> well it. there you go there yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna skip to the end here okay and then we'll go back oh. in may 1999 four years after taylor's disappearance two hikers who were shooting car wrecks in Decker Canyon near Malibu discovered the rusted shell of his van with him inside of it. His death was caused by blunt force trauma. What? But oh my gosh. don't know whether it was suicide, an accident, or a homicide. Oh. Yeah. It's, oh. What? Four what? years it took them to find him. <laughs> I mean, right off the bat, I think it is probably homicide, it right? Because like yeah. if it's blunt force like yeah, trauma you have to imagine yeah and if he wanted to still be living after going missing he probably mm-hmm. was not trying to no do that like his van was okay what was it was just rusted it wasn't like bashed in the front or something like he crashed into something like it was just on the side of the road oh then something he someone probably hit him in the head or however they did that it is, and wh- put him but back how in the van. Th- how'd they find him yeah oh at the airport maybe <laughs> at the oh, airport. i don't know what? okay Ew. so let's continue okay let's go back um, in the time of his absence, a lot came out about how he was under enormous business stress and was, quote, galvanized by a euphoria over recent mathematical discoveries he believed he had made with his father. 
Mm. His firm, Total Multimedia, was a maverick in video compression, the technology that stores uh, videos on CDs. That was like a big thing. It was a thing that was starting probably before that, but it was becoming a thing in the 90s. But that company weathered storms in the marketplace and had bitter infighting during a 1994 bankruptcy in which Total Multimedia kind of just barely got out of with the help Mm. of Greg Martini, who he was picking up at the airport that day. He, like, was a huge investor in the firm, and because he was investing so much, they had to reorganize, like, the whole firm. Mm -hmm. Which, this whole reorganizing and bankruptcy was apparently very traumatic for Taylor, because, this is what he said, within that process, a lot of greed came out, and greed was the most offensive thing to him. Mm. It hurt him to his core, he said. Uh, Total Multimedia continues to have problems with infighting, and it gotten to the point where Taylor felt he couldn't trust anybody, including Dr- Greg Martini. Oh. oh, no. Here's what's interesting. Mm-hmm. On the morning he disappeared, he took his wife aside and said, at some point, I'm going to need an hour alone today with Greg. That's all he said. <laughs> That's concerning. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. He apparently never got that time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Wait, he, never never saw, he never saw him. Quote so my unquote. question oh. is, like, just so I'm understanding the time here, did Greg get to the like get to where uh, this missing guy got to when he was alive? Still, does that make any sense? So apparently, Greg claims he didn't see Taylor at the airport. Mm. So Taylor okay. was there for 45 minutes, but Waiting. Greg never saw him. Quote. I think that's a quote unquote. Okay. Never saw him. Like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, I didn't see the guy. I mean, it's possible. I don't have the times that he left before the plane got in. Yeah, or, that's my or only like question. That. But I'm like, he could be there for quote 45 minutes. Yeah, and have been there longer and went missing because Greg pulled some shady stuff. Yeah, but I don't know for sure. So, yet, uh, Kramer's father was also a. He was a retired um, engineering professor. Mm-hmm. And he was also part of this firm. And he was a bit of a genius himself. I heard some things that he spent a lot of his life trying to discredit Albert Einstein's theories. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Weird guy to pick see, beef with. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. I didn't see anything else other than that. So, <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Um, he was a retired professor of electrical engineering and joined in like 1989 when it was just starting. Mm-hmm. Above everything... Ray Kramer's abiding passion was in working out mathematical equations that sought to advance the understanding of the cosmos at large. Okay. Um, as far back as 30 years prior, Ray felt that he was on to something original, and only recently did he and his son manage to yoke the power of these equations in the computers that they were trying to develop. Mm-hmm. Uh, the breakthrough that they that was happening, in fact, came just two weeks prior to his mm-hmm. di- disappearance. And a euphoric and elated Taylor, his father says, dubbed it Ray's moment. His mm-hmm. father's, like, moments. All of these theories coming to fruition. Oh. While the essence of their work is a complete secret still, Ray Kramer allows that he has long sought through the gut study of gravitation waves and particles to determine whether transmission faster than the speed of light is possible. Mm. That's what they were working on. Whoa. If so, that is, if there were a light barrier to pierce just as there was once a sound barrier to break, it would mean that communication could occur via gravity waves anywhere in the universe within one second. Mm -hmm. To the extent science can measure the universe, light takes 10 billion years to cross it. Um, The implications of Ray Kramer's theorems, should they work, are thus revolutionary, revolutionary not only to science, but to life everywhere it might exist. Mm. That would bridge the two disparate fields of electromagnetism and gravitation a grander application of such a theory <laughs> could potentially lead to the invention of teleportation <gasps> so let's big go things. yeah <laughs> what if he teleported through all this stuff yeah like how they have like no evidence <laughs> of him left. yeah he just teleported <laughs> oh my god crazy then he wouldn't um, need to pay for parking i guess but <laughs> <laughs> he could have had a breakthrough like, yeah. at the airport and be like, oh my god, I have to go. <laughs> yeah. But maybe he was um, too Like, I don't warm. need this anymore. No. <laughs> I don't need Greg. <laughs> maybe he was able to do it, but, like, something about it, like, huh. hurt him physically. And he yeah. died because it was too much energy for him to process yet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, mm. the great challenge to an outfit like a firm like that would be 
parsing a piece of theoretical science and making it serve a here and now video or computer product that you can just sell, like mm -hmm. in the marketplace that makes money for a company. Um, the Total Multimedia specializes in fractal compression, a mathematically driven software-based approach to recording and playing back video images that does away with the need for computer hardwares such as accelerator cards and other high-end accessories. Mm -hmm. This is 30 years ago, so mm -hmm. we're probably far past this at this yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. So we can definitely teleport now, is what I'm saying. Maybe. <laughs> yes. We can teleport we, and then some. That. The government <laughs> can. They just not shown us yet. Uh, so. Wow. When questioned about this when he disappeared, Total Multimedia declined to say how something related to Ray's moment and the subject of two sleepless weeks of Taylor Cramer might be of commercial use, if at all. Mm. Sounds like they're hiding something. They mm. are shady. It's pretty shady. Um, Jennifer Kramer, seeing her husband act with obsessiveness and run equations at 3 a.m., was concerned enough to ask Kramer what it was that was driving him so. She quotes him as saying, one week before his disappearance, Imagine being able to flash up a picture of a missing child on this computer screen, or even part of a picture, and with this new equation, be, being able to find that child in a fraction of a second. Mm. But Kramer, Ray Kramer joked about it, and he was like, maybe his disappearance is his idea of testing us to try oh, and find yeah. him. Oh, <laughs> that's a cool mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. It's like clues, almost. Well, yeah, like, oh, I think we can use this. Why well, didn't you figure it out? Didn't it say, too, that, like, he called, like, in multiple different areas, too? Yeah. Like, he was like, I'm going to commit suicide. Teleport. I'm yeah. going to commit suicide. <laughs> he like, was keeps all hopping. over Los Angeles with these, wow. with these uh, sightings of him. And, like, all everywhere. the hellos in the phone is probably, like, him testing it from something, maybe. Like, mm -hmm. hello, hello, hello. That is so spooky. Ew. It's spooky. It's just weird. Uh... Prior to this, Kathy, uh, Taylor's sister, said he was so excited that he was calling the math sacred. Uh, she's, mm. She was worried that he was v having visions. Uh, my brother takes on the weight of the world upon himself. He loves Jennifer and he loves his kids dearly, but he banked everything on this discovery with my dad and his mind just ran away with it. He talked of supernovas, earthquakes, and all events having no coincidences. Oh. She feared that he had some kind of breakdown. Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer also recurs that Cr uh, recalls that Kramer, in his sleepless euphoria about the apparent breakthrough stemming from Ray's moment, was jumpy about the presence of patent attorneys at Total Multimedia's offices. He had, mm -hmm. in the week before his disappearance, said, we've got to be careful. Mm. Spooky. Mm. I'm thinking maybe, like, he did figure it out, and then as soon as someone from, like, his firm or something realized what he was doing, maybe they, they took him out. Nixed him. Yeah. They nixed Ooh. him. That's fine. So he was releasing <laughs> scientific technology he shouldn't have been. They're like, don't be messing with Ooh. that yet. He worked for a governmentally subcontracted firm at one point. Oh, so I'm just saying. Gosh. <laughs> you know, um, mess up. On the Friday before his disappearance, Taylor Kramer had a three-hour meeting with Dan Shields, his his colleague, and another founder of Total Multimedia. Mm. This was two days before his disappearance. Kramer paced around the conference room. Shields was on the couch. According to Shields, Kramer was in a euphoric state. I told him to just go home and get some sleep, said Shields. He was really going on about everything, at times not holding things together. Taylor is a great guy, though sometimes the little stuff stops him. I mean, this is a guy who doesn't know how to swap computer files between directories, but who, if you ask him, can sit down and do a huge compression on a drive. He's amazing that way, but on that Friday, he was having trouble, and he was clear that he had not slept for a long time. Mm -hmm. So he was having these kind of delusions of something. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, Kramer did go home. He didn't get some sleep, and he still vanished with 40 cents in his pocket. Wow. And that's the extent oh, of it. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. I'm going to posit some theories. Okay. This is this was something I thought. Taylor, feeling the immense pressure of a potentially life-as-we-know-it breakthrough, experiences a psychotic break bri brought on by weeks of sleepless nights, coupled with the pressure of having to take your breakthrough to a company that had been marred by continuous infighting and reliving the trauma of the resulting greed of trying to implement such a life-changing discovery. Mm -hmm. He has to meet the man who helped save his company but forced his family to reorganize it to include him. Mm -hmm. He knows that he has to talk to Greg Martini about it, hence the hour alone with Greg. Mm -hmm. hence, oh. yeah, hence the wish for an hour alone to talk. 
but it, instead he leaves the airport before he can face him, doesn't pay his parking fee, and runs around Los Angeles before eventually killing himself. Mm, That's four years thought. later, though. Yeah, well, Not fine his four years remains later. were skeletal. Oh. So at that point, they mm. found his body. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, hmm. Oh. That's all we theory. All we know, really, is that he went to the airport, left without picking up his business associate, made several sporadic and troubling calls, called 911 and declared that he was going to kill himself and wasn't seen again until over four years later that when he was discovered. That's all we really know. Yeah. Yeah. My question, this is the crazier one, mm-hmm. was there really someone after him and threatening him about his most recent discoveries? His father seemed to think so. His father seemed to think so. <laughs> his father said that if he ever claimed he was going to commit suicide, that he would be in big trouble. Mm. Who are these people he was afraid of? He died of blunt force trauma. The police couldn't determine that it was a suicide. Were there forces larger than him that would cause him to be put in such a situation, forcing him to make scattered calls and placing a very clear 911 call stating that who he was and what he was going to do? Mm. It doesn't seem like a logical thing that you would do if you were in that state. He says, I am Philip Taylor Kramer and I am going to kill myself. I don't, yeah. would, would I think, you say that? Like, I think especially the way he was going about saying it, it was almost like, hey, what is it, the stepdad? Who was it? His father. His father. He was telling his father, like, hey, this is what I'm saying. I hope yes. you pick up on this because I'm actually in trouble. That's yeah. the one that's so confusing is that his dad specifically said, he said, if yeah. I ever say that, I'm in trouble. And yeah. I believe it. I genuinely think he was in trouble. It sounds from these like he people. was in trouble. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like it too, like he maybe wanted like the police to think he did that or something. Like mm-hmm. he wanted public knowledge to be like this person is dead even mm-hmm. when he wasn't. Mm-hmm. That is wild. That is like, wild. That I just I also gotta say, Benjamin, you're like a uh, storytelling voice is very good. I like know, I was like so I, invested over I here. I was like before we even started, because Benjamin is a little nervous before we started. Obviously, <laughs> this is his first podcast, so welcome to our podcast, Thank obviously. You. But you did a delightful <laughs> job. But even just I just want to go off your theories for a second. Mm-hmm. I feel like all of them are very well thought through, and I feel like they even have room. It could be a teleportation thing mm-hmm. in addition mm-hmm. to all that, because I feel like going off the thing with the psychotic break it could be a psychotic break because he's also figuring out if if this is actually real he's also figuring out that he can teleport so of course you're going to be losing your actual mind if you find that you can do something like this but in addition to that it could also be people chasing after him because they're realizing what he's doing and he's not supposed to be doing it Mm -hmm. so they're going Mm -hmm. after him until finally they catch him yeah. And he's on the on the way there. He's reporting to all these people, hello, hello, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Hear what I'm actually saying, please, yeah. and help me. And it's too late. I mean, I agree with that. If I, if I discover teleportation, I'd be kind of, like, scared for myself. Yeah. Because a lot of people would not want me to have that knowledge or that power or want to take that Also, I feel like power. that would feel, like, physically crazy to be the only person. Yeah. It's like, am I actually doing this? Am I okay? Like, I would feel like yeah. I was losing it a little bit. If you were in trouble with someone like larger than you mm-hmm. he's at the airport where else it's like the perfect place to ambush him because yeah like a government style building mm-hmm. if you were trying to like stage someone that's go has a psychotic break yeah what would you do you would have them go around the city make very memorable appearances he goes to a pawn shop and asks he's talking about computers with this guy he's not trying to sell his wedding ring he's mm-hmm. trying to talk computers he goes up to this couple he specifically says, I only have 40 cents in my pocket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I call my family? That That's confusing a little bit because he has a cell phone, but maybe mm-hmm. it's gone dead by this point. Or he's being tracked. Or he's being mm. tracked, he tracked rid thing. of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, does the, how does the van get there? You know, yeah. and they find him four years later. Yeah. It, it's just like wild though, like... Uh... Because I was thinking, why didn't he take, like, cash out of the bank? But at that point, like, they could have backtracked that and been, like, he took out, like, this many things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a lot of... Everybody in his family says he would never leave his family like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just the quote, if I'm in trouble and I say I'm going to kill myself, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's so specifically... This was like calculated from him. It was a setup to try to escape from something. Yeah, it really something does sound was like coming. It. From also, him. him continually bringing up the same facts to people. It's like he kind of wants people to be his witness. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, mm-hmm. I have forty cents in my pocket. People are all saying the same exact thing. It's almost like he's telling it to leave markers for other people who end up trying to find him because he's running from these people. Yeah. it's very. He's also thoughtful. all over Los Angeles, which yeah. could be a thing. Mm-hmm. Like he's trying. Either someone took him 
and they were like trying to plant this or he was actually trying to get out yeah so he's all over los angeles mm -hmm. like on many different places santa monica here he's in malibu he's in yeah which is not close yeah so yeah los angeles is huge it's huge so <laughs> All in the course of a day, he's going all over these places, so he's yeah. like kind of trying to put bread breadcrumbs of like where to find him in many different places to say. Yeah. So it yeah. seems like he had a psychotic break, or I don't know. Yeah, you just don't wow. Know. That's wild. Yeah, I it don't is. know. I think it was a little bit of everything, genuinely. Yeah, I, I love like that one. That kind of stuff will lead you to a psychotic break, and I feel like mm -hmm. even all the nights leading up that he wasn't getting any to sleep. I feel like if you had that kind of knowledge and mm -hmm. knew that like you could be in danger for having mm -hmm. said knowledge, I wouldn't be able to sleep either. That, yeah, that knowledge plus being sleepless. Being yeah. Being sleep deprived. You're going to act a little crazy. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good. good case. <laughs> Thanks. Great case. What Wait. would you say it remains? Yeah, yeah, I was about to say you have to yeah, do yeah, that yeah. thing. We'll never know what truly happened. <gasps> so the disappearance of Philip Taylor Kramer will remain a mystery. Wow. Yay! <laughs> oh my God, that's so, so good. Thank you for that case, Benjamin. It's so good. good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs>